What's up guys, it's Manga Time once again. I'm here today to bring you my review of Bleach 592, Marching Out the Zombies 3. So I reckon this volume might be called Marching Out the Zombies. Uh, it'd be really cool if it had Giselle on the cover, I think it probably will. I was at work today, and uh, I was just trying to think like who might be on the all-stars of this volume, just because I can think of four. You probably have Miyuri, Ikaku, Yumichika, and Giselle. Then I was thinking maybe Zombie Toshiro and Zombie Bambietta. I digress. Um, unfortunately, there's no chapter next week. But there is one other thing I want to mention quickly before we get into the review, and that is thank you so much for getting me to 500 subscribers. That is an insane number, and it's just really great to you know finally be there because I'm hovering around the 490 mark for a very long time, and it's just really cool to finally hit 500. And you know, hopefully, just onwards and upwards from here. So yeah, thanks for your support. Anyway, onto the chapter, and everyone is kind of shocked to see Toshiro arrive. And as expected, the first page is just, um, you know, it's just reaction shots. And it's really cool. Um, uh, it's interesting that Loopy doesn't say anything at all, because obviously he fought Toshiro. And Giselle's kind of just like, like super psyched. Um, so yeah, it's really weird that Loopy doesn't say anything at all. Um, I definitely expected there to be some banter, but I'm actually, I'm not too bothered that there isn't, because honestly, that would have probably been filler if nothing else. But anyway... One might argue this entire chapter was filler, but basically you get this cool double page spread of um, Ikaku and Yumichika looking up at Toshiro, and he's on top of this building miles away. He looks pretty cool in his, uh, his outfit, I have to admit, and they're all really shocked to see him. And basically he, he starts attacking immediately, it's really cool, it gets off to like a completely flying start. And what I want to say immediately is just that the art in this chapter is awesome, the battle choreography is awesome, um, and it's just, there's just some really cool fight scenes. Um, and basically, yeah, Toshiro raises his blade, and immediately Yumichika goes to use a Bakudo. But Ikaku says that you can't stop Toshiro's power with Kido because he's just too strong. Because, you know, Yumichika's technically only a fifth seat, even though he's got more power than that. So Ikaku smacks you, literally smacks Yumichika in the stomach with his Hozaki Maru. And at first, I, I thought Toshiro was hitting him because there's a blood coming out of his mouth and everything. But no, it is just yeah, Ikaku hitting him out of the way. I actually really like this bit, because Toshiro literally just smashes the ground with this huge plume of ice. And really, quite honestly, I don't remember him ever being that powerful. Um, but anyway, you basically, Ikaku hit Yumichika out of the way of the ice. And uh, unfortunately for himself, he didn't quite manage to get away. He's lying on the floor, his leg is all covered in ice, and he basically... I, I, I think it's gone. I'm not actually... I'm not sure. He says... You know, my leg is a small price to pay. Um, actually, no, looking at the panel, it's not gone, it's just frozen over. Now, you know, let's be honest, no one ever doesn't break out of ice in Bleach, but Ikaku doesn't really get the chance to break out of it, because suddenly Toshiro stabs him through the chest. Yeah. Naturally, he doesn't stab him on the side where his heart is, but, you know, still, it's a pretty nasty wound. And, it, and like, he rips the blade out of him, and then he just slashes him across the back. Um, so at this point I was like, well, Ikaku was taking a serious beating here. Never once did I really think he was going to die, but it's just interesting to see that this is Toshiro just uninhibited by emotion. This is how powerful he could be, essentially, if he was just completely ruthless. Literally, he just put down Ikaku and Yumichika. Um, but after he slashed Ikaku, Yumichika comes in and clashes blades with him. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see Ikaku's just lying in a pool of blood. Do I think he's going to die? No, probably not. Um, for one thing, he's he's with Miyuri, and if Miyuri gets out of this alive, you can just heal him completely. But um, it's really cool, though, because despite the fact that, you know, they might not be dying, but at least a lot of the Shinigami are taking way worse beatings from individual villains than they were in the fake Karakura Town arc. Like, seriously, Ikaku has just been put down. He's lying face down in a pool of blood. Like, seriously, nothing like that really happened in fake Karakura Town. I mean, like... What I can't really remember what happened to Ikaku. He got smacked out by Poe, and then I don't think I don't think he did anything after that actually. So yeah, it's it's cool to see this, and the fight scenes are just more intense I think just because of the damage the Shinigami are taking. Anyway, yeah, Yumichika blocks the attack, and then he tries to use Ruriro Kujaku, which is awesome because at this point he's clearly so desperate that he just you know he wants to, he, he's going to reveal his secret. Even though Ikaku's probably out cold at this point, and I think it's very interesting. I think this is kind of just a plot hole I want to say. Um, but, or maybe Kubo didn't really have their relationship fleshed out, but I think he probably did. But regardless, I remember back when, um, Ikaku fought 
Edelrad Leonas in the in the Karakura town at the very beginning of the Aranka arc. When Yumichika thought Ikaku had died, he didn't give a shit. He was just he was just like, can I have a company funeral for Ikaku Madarame? And every time Ikaku is beaten, he's like, Ikaku! Oh my god! So I think that's quite funny. But anyway, there's a really cool bit now where Toshiro knees Yumichika in the stomach, but he's covered his knee in ice, and so Yumichika's like bleeding and it's cutting into him. And that's just a really cool application of Toshiro's ice that we just never see. That's why I have to say Zombie Hitsugaya is so much better than the original. And frankly, I hope he stays dead. Anyway, he grabs he grabs Yumichika by the uh, by the hair and headbutts him, and then he slashes him down the down the chest. Um, so I have to say that if any of them were going to die, I think it's probably Yumichika, even though I don't think he is going to die. Um, it'd be interesting if he was left with a nasty scar afterwards, though, because he's literally been sliced like that, and it looks pretty looks pretty rough. Um, he could end up looking like Kenpachi, but with opposite scars, that'd be kind of neat. Um, but anyway, yeah, he's completely out of the game as well now. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I, it looks like he loses his arm, but I don't think he does. No, I don't think he actually does. So yeah, that's that's yeah, he gets completely just destroyed by Toshiro. So they're both out of the game. And then Miri arrives. And he gives us a bit of exposition as to what the hell's going on, basically. And Toshiro tries to attack him, but Miri just completely dodges him, I've noticed. He's like but he's like I just noticed this right now. He's like behind him at one point, Toshiro swings around and Miri's on the other side of him. So yeah. Basically, Miri's just analysing Toshiro, and we get the kind of reasoning behind why Toshiro seems so powerful, and why Bambietta seems so weak. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. So, Miri says, you know, basically, Miri believes that Toshiro was made into a zombie before he died. So that still implies that Toshiro is now dead, but it just implies that Bambi uh, Giselle turned him into a zombie before he died. So she comes up and she's like, you know, you're right. And she basically says those that were turned into zombies before they die are, uh, are you know, they, they are they fight better, they're stronger. Those that, because they, their body hasn't started to die yet, they haven't, they haven't like, got undergone rigor mortis or any, any of that sort of thing. So that's the bit that makes sense. If you zombify them before they die, they fight better because they're not a corpse, essentially. Um, the bit that doesn't make any sense, though, is she says that um, those that get... Those that get zombified before death no longer have any real um, control over their bodies. So if you remember, Bambietta was still able to talk, she was still slightly in control of herself, whereas Tosha has no control whatsoever. That doesn't make any sense. Why would the person who's dead keep some control of their body, whereas the person who was alive don't keep anything at all? It's I I, I think that a lot of this is convenience. Um, it just Kubo's writing it however it, it works easiest for him. Honestly, I don't really mind. Um, and Miri's just, Miri gives us a cracking one line. It's just a typical Miri line. He's like, how absolutely ridiculous. What could be so fun about controlling someone who has no consciousness? Because, you know, he's a typical sadist. We get a good Miri troll face. And uh, Giselle replies, you know, she's... Miri, I like Giselle. I do like her because she, she she's never really phased by Miri. He turns around on some creepy-ass troll face. And she's just like, well, I'm not a sadist, so I can't answer you that. Which is interesting, because she strikes me as a bit of a sadist, but, you know. Anyway, Charlotte Colhorn arrives on the scene, uh, getting a little above his station, and he wants to try and take on Toshiro. It's interesting that he doesn't know who Toshiro is, um, since they were both in fake Karakura Town together, but it may, you know, it's believable, I suppose, that he didn't see him, since he did arrive in front of Yumichika immediately. Anyway, he decide, he's like, you know, I just need to defeat this kid now. And so he tries to wipe him out. Um... <laughs> And Miri's like, you fool, what the hell are you doing? Uh, but basically, Charlotte Colhorn just gets sliced down the front. Um, now, this what I really like is this is all very reminiscent of, like, Retro Bleach. Um, where basically, you know, everyone's using swords. There's lots of, like, slashes and one-shot slashes. And, it, and it's just really cool. The, the choreography is really good. And obviously, because they're Quincy, you don't get to see swords a lot, which I think is possibly... One of the only shames about this arc, and about having Quincy's as the, as the bad guys, is that you don't get to see a lot of sword play, a lot of Zanjutsu being shown off. Um, and it's just really refreshing to see this um, kind of thing again. Like, it's really weird, because, like, Bambietta had a sword in the first invasion, and yet he never uses it again. So, yeah, Shark Horn gets completely obliterated. He gets, like, he just gets one shot, his arm comes, his hand comes flying off. Um, and then Toshiro tries to finish him off, but Miuri blocks him with what might be a Kido. But it looks a bit too artificial to be a key. He basically summons like um, a grid of light, and he blocks Toshiro. 
And basically he says that Coolhorn's just going to have to lie there now because that's his punishment. So I don't think Coolhorn's going to die, but he's just going to have to lie there. Anyway, Muri basically has had enough of this crap. And he's, uh, he's like, I can't just have you killing all my subordinates, all my test subjects. And essentially Miyuri decides to take on Hitsugaya himself, which is going to be really cool. Um, back to Captain vs. Captain, which is awesome. Uh, in the in the manga stream translation, Miri says, Now, even though I prefer being covered in flesh and muscle rather than skin, that doesn't mean I approve of such cruelties upon my test subjects. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Uh, I don't really know what he's talking about there. Is he saying he likes to change how he looks, but he doesn't like his subordinates getting that kind of treatment? I don't really know. I don't know. But he basically, the final page of the chapter is him essentially throwing down with Hitsugaya. Um, you could probably take something from it. He says, I have, ma I have many drugs I want to try out on you. Do you want to become my guinea pig? You don't have to worry. It's, it's all for the sake of the Seireite. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. I don't think there's an enormous amount to take from this. We all know how Miyuri fights. He fights with his, his really weird style of drugs. I'm pretty sure that final page is just him issuing a challenge to Toshiro. He's going to start fighting him. Um... Is Miuri going to win? That's another question. Now, Miuri has only had two fights, I want to say, not including this one. And that's Uryu and uh, Zale. And he didn't take a single hit in Zale's fight, so he's actually doing quite well. Um, in, so if he gets damaged now, it'd be interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I was really expecting Miuri to pull out a, a, a zombified Esparda. Like, I think it just seems like a perfect opportunity. Um, but if Miuri doesn't have an Esparda as a trump card, that's going to be really weird, I think. Um... I want to see Giselle summon Stone Ritters and Miri summon Espadas, but I don't. I don't necessarily know it's going to happen. I have to say though, this fight is lasting a lot longer than I thought it would. I think Giselle's been fighting maybe for five chapters now, four maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean it's actually really enjoyable. I'm really liking this fight. As for that chapter, I'm going to give it an eight. I thought it maybe wasn't as powerful as last chapter, but I really love the choreography. I really love the uh, sword v sword, and just some great Miri lines again. Uh, not a whole lot of Giselle in this week's chapter, and some of the explanations were a bit muddled. Some of them made a bit of sense, though. Um, so that's going to be it for this week's, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you thought of this chapter. No chapter next week, which is a huge shame. Uh, but we might get early chapter in the week after that. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, guys, hit that subscribe button. That'd be really great to keep the number going up. I really appreciate your support. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the chapter, and give this video a like. I really appreciate it. Until next time, guys. See ya.